You are now listening to the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, certified self-leadership trainer and author of the best-selling book, Stay the Course, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some goodies today from the guest that's up next. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, the Going North podcast, are back at you again with the returning guest, baby. That's right, the season of returning guests is still in effect, y'all. That's right, we got another wonderful, super special, awesome human who survived my corny jokes the last time and is back for more. <laughs> That's right, because my goodness, this wonderful author right here, multiple time award winning author, folks, award winning. And soon to be best selling author once again, because she's also an editor, professor, and two term, you heard that right, folks, two term president of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. So let's give it up for the wonderful meow of all the SMGs and the M9s, Cat Rambo. How you doing today, Cat? <laughs> I'm doing wonderfully. How are you? Oh, Terry, great. That's right. Welcome back. She's back in better than ever, not better than ever. <laughs> That's true. Back for more. More corn. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, yeah, I was telling her, like, hey, if she wakes up and there's a corn cob in the bathroom instead of a toothbrush, she mm -hmm. already knows what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> That's right, indeed. There's a reason why corny jokes belong on podcasts, because they're <laughs> ears of corn. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I love about talking to you is you just laugh. <laughs> Eh, but who am I kidding? It ain't about corn, it's about the wonderful cat herself. So my goodness, how have you been since last year? It's been almost a year since round number one. So how have you been holding up with all the stuff that's going on and still finding time to write and teach others to procrastinate less? That's it. Well, my life has not been that different. I sort of hold up during the pandemic. I actually, my husband started working from home, so it actually became a little more sociable uh, here in the house. Uh, and so I've just been holed up and writing and working and getting ready to launch this book. Oh, yeah, that's right. You sexy thing indeed. So what inspired the title? Because that's a funny title. I'm like, oh, it's this cat Rambo, you sexy thing. It's like, <laughs> if, you don't, if they don't know you by name, they're like, wait, is Rambo wearing a cat hat? helmet with the gun or something and like what's going on here <laughs> so the characters steal an intelligent spaceship and you sexy thing is the name of the spaceship Ooh, there we go yeah. that's what i'm talking yeah. about uh, and it's a ship that isn't sure that it wants to be stolen so it has certain objections to the whole process <laughs> Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, some say they know where this is going, but some may be like, I don't think I want to know where this is going. <laughs> it might be a trap. It's like, don't you dare steal the ship, darn it. <laughs> if the ship talks back, it's game over. <laughs> Forget Alexa and Siri. <laughs> Oh, it's 10 times worse than either of those, right? It's just going to go off on with a mind of its own. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's what I'm talking about. Well, already, I feel like I'm sold already. And funny enough, the yeah. audiobook is yeah. up for pre-sale at the time of this recording, too. That's it. Yeah, I, I, it got delayed because of the pandemic. It was actually supposed to come out last year around this time. And uh, it slipped and then it slipped some more. And now I finally have hard copies just arrived last week. So I know it's actually a thing. It will actually happen. Hooray, it's going to happen for real. She's got her own hard copies. <laughs> <sighs> ah, 
Ah, sweet. Well, that's not talking about. That's not talking about the days. This is going to be one heck of a famous book to look forward to because it's the first of many. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be a follow up to this one, right? Yep. I am writing the second book right now. I hope to actually have the first draft of it done by the end of this month, but this is not the first month I've said that. So who knows? <laughs> but I've got it planned out as a 10 book series. So I need to get the second book finished and start on the third. So this might not just be a trilogy. It might be a whole five parter, huh? That's my plan. I enjoy these characters. These are about the most fun characters that I've ever written. And they're ones that I talk to in my head in a way I don't, uh, some of the other characters in my books or my stories. And I just enjoy the heck out of them. So I'm really looking forward to spending a long time in this universe and letting them all have all the adventures that they want to have. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So that's mm -hmm. right. This is going to be even twice as good. This might even be your best series yet. I hope. <laughs> that's right. And are you still outlining this series or are you still going the pants around for this one or? Um, I'm actually being uh, much more disciplined with writing these. Uh, and I actually, I come in, into it with a pretty thorough outline. And then I have this uh, actually kind of painful writing regime where I get up about 5.30 or 6 and I go work out while I'm listening to music and thinking about what I'm going to write. And then I come home and write. And the painful part is I have to avoid the internet. Uh, until I have finished my word count. So no email, no text, no Twitter, no Pinterest, no real estate advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you get it done. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. So 2,000 words or no email or internet. That's right. That's right. That's Emails right. for closers. <laughs> That's right. That's right, indeed. Okay. Emails for closers. Get the coffee first. That's right. That's right. Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, that's a new tagline for Cad Rambo. That's right. Emails for closers, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I feel, you know, I've been writing for a while now, and I, I finally got to the point where I, I actually feel like I know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, when you first start writing, I think, you start in a stage where it's always a surprise when you finish something or, you know, like you've completed a story and it's like, holy cow, where did this story come from? And then that sort of wears off um, and, and you start kind of sitting down and being like, okay, I know I can produce the words. I don't know exactly what they'll be, but I have some idea of which way they'll go in and I'm going to have some fun discovering them. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I'm talking about today. Well, one question I'd like to ask guests who come back for round two, and you're actually Ooh. special since this ain't your first rodeo, far from it, is that like, <laughs> hey, if you were to really, well, now since you're in this new process of probably, my God, a 34th book probably, like, is there anything <laughs> that you would do differently now that you have all this wonderful knowledge and now you're at this more organized, it seems more like in this calm control pace? Oh, you mean like going back to myself as a, a baby writer and, and giving them good advice? I, I would certainly tell them that uh, getting your butt in the chair and writing is the most important thing. And I would also tell them to make sure they back up everything twice. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I probably need to do that after we're done recording. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always something much later. You're like, oh, that really would have been a good idea. Wouldn't that have? And then, yeah, it's too late by then. But you can remember it for the future. But Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, oh, crap. It's like, yeah, back it up. Oh, back it up twice. Have something mirrored or paired or something because, uh, ouch. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, that sounds like a horror story. Yeah. Well, you know, 
I actually, I lost a whole novel. Uh, and it was because I had everything on those little uh, three, 3.5 discs, right? It was the discs that came after floppy disks. And I, I put it aside for a long, long time. And then I came back much later and those discs had deteriorated in oh. the interrupt and they were no longer readable. So that was a real bummer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ouch. But that's how we learn. Oh, well, you can say that again. <laughs> My goodness. It's kind of like the black belt martial artist when he gets to the black belt and realizes, oh, I need to do the foundations again and do it all oh, over yeah. again. Oh, yeah. Go back to the footwork. That's right. In this case, pen work. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, that is that is exactly what I would, I would tell my younger self. But I, I think one of the things that I would definitely kind of follow that all up with is, is just to, to trust myself more. I think a lot of times being a writer is a lot about uh, self-confidence. Ah, uh, that's right. Two solid foundations and two solid mm -hmm. reminders right there. That's right. Back up everything twice and have some confidence. Trust yourself. That's right. If the pen falls, you'll be okay as long as you don't fall. Yeah. But if you fall out the chair, put that in the novel somewhere. That's it. It's all it's all story material. <laughs> oh. But it, it's, that's true. I mean, one of the things about being a writer is even when really, really kind of cruddy stuff is happening, it, it's part of you can be like, oh, I'm suffering. But another part of you can kind of sit back and go, well, maybe this will make for an interesting story. Oh, yeah, that's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. That's probably even why you work out in the morning. So that way you can extend the youth and with the music to keep mm -hmm. you pumping and going. It increases it. the discipline. That's it. No, I think you're right. I mean, that part of doing the workout and thinking about what I'm writing. I mean, I, I, writing is not just something that you do with your head. It's something that you do with your body as well. And if you're feeling kind of cruddy and you're not feeling very lively or you're just not feeling healthy, uh, it can be harder to write. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like imagine yourself as job of the hood metaphorically like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to get writing done that way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nobody wants to be job of the hood. That's right. Nobody needs to be job of the hood. Heck, even job of the hood doesn't want to be job of the hood. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, indeed. Mm -hmm. So with all that increased discipline and making sure you're getting those words done first, has there been a skill in particular that you've been sharpening the most over the past year? I have been cooking and trying new recipes and sending away for exotic ingredients and trying them because I really miss uh, going out to restaurants. So I've been doing a lot of uh, things here perfecting various techniques uh, and uh, actually I started making I, I got some edible glitter and I've been making glittering jello uh, trying to make space opera type desserts to go as as part of the book so uh, if we have a party for the book I can serve this kind of glittering fancy jello it's uh, very cool looking oh shoot all right that's what I'm talking about so edible glitter <laughs> <laughs> From a book called You Sexy Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed in keeping. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It'll be a spaceship with a miniskirt. A That's glittery it. miniskirt. <laughs> well, that's the fun thing about the book is that it just, it's not the world's most serious book. I mean, I, it, is, it is a story of kind of found family and friendship and struggle over adversity, but it is a, a story that's full of banter and humor and I, I think a certain amount of lightness. You can say that again. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That's right, indeed. Heck, even with the wonderful bats, what helps you to really help with those parts when it comes to writing the story? Is it a life experience or do you feel like it's something totally different? I think life experience helps. I mean, because, you know, 
if one may not know what it's like to to drive a spaceship, but like let's say the person driving the spaceship is feeling nervous, you can remember what it was like to feel nervous driving. I think a, a lot of the emotional stuff is is stuff that you know. Uh, at least that's how I I try to think about it. Ah, that's what I'm talking about, indeed. Yeah, cause it's definitely true right there. Cause that's uh that's the thing about the whole fiction writing piece especially if it's going to be more than one book in a whole series it's like mm -hmm. really just having all of that planned ahead and mm -hmm. like even just going with the flow and all that wonderful good stuff it's like oh when to put this banter here or even should <laughs> these folks even have this moment <laughs> depends on how entertaining the moment is you only want to keep the entertaining ones ah well amen to that uh -huh. heck well this is probably a bad transition to this question, but funny enough, I'll just ask it anyway. So okay. if this book was a particular food item, since we mentioned food earlier, what would it be? Oh, my God. Um, well, you know, the temptation is just to say glittering jello, but uh, I, I'm going to say glittering jello with a lot of amazing tiny candies tucked inside it. Tiny sparkly candies and maybe some Pop Rocks. That's what this book is. <laughs> yes, Pop Rocks, yes. <laughs> Freaking Glitter Asteroids, yes. <laughs> that's it. Glitter Asteroids, that's it, pretty much. That's what I'll name the dessert, Glitter Asteroids. Uh, I see all that glitters ain't gold. Well, in this case, <laughs> all that glitters, well, just eat it. <laughs> there you go. It's delicious. That's right, it's so delicious, it'll make your head spin. One That's hopes. right. That's right. It'll just spin into outer space. <laughs> beyond question. To the moon <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> just make sure the moon doesn't moon you. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to the corny jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I admit my corniness. I embrace it with open That's arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> open ears. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Ah, the mod control is working. Hooray. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> That's right. Soon we'll have her saying yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Any moment now. <laughs> uh, well, I usually like to try to say enough of my corn, but I already know that ain't going to happen. So, since this is far from your first rodeo, is there a question that you wish to be asked more often when you're on the guest side of the game on these magical podcasts? Oh, gosh. I, what did I, what don't I get asked? I don't get asked what kind of pets I have, and I have right now a pet jumping spider. So I'm going to mention that. Are you a spider phobic person? If you are, I apologize. <laughs> Did you say you have a pet jumping spider? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's one wow. of the things during the pandemic was, you know, like you poke around on Facebook, like who during the pandemic did not like find all sorts of things on the internet that you had never discovered before because you spent so much time on it. But I discovered that people kept these jumping spiders as pets. And so I actually got one and her name is Xena, Spider Princess. And she lives in a terrarium up on my flying cabinet. All righty. So no book signing <laughs> at your house. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, like a... <laughs> I discovered spiders are the most common phobia. Uh, so I, I've actually, I've been pretty careful not to put pictures of her up on Twitter or anything like that, uh, because it is, I, I, it is um, a trigger for much, many more people than I had realized. 
but I think she's super cool. Well, I mean, it is the warrior princess spider, so I mean, you know. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, if only you could like share the pictures, and then when they would scroll away, it would actually send them directly to your website. It's like, hey, hey, what's up? There you go. Newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> It's really funny because like some people get very excited by her. My friend Sean and uh, just loves uh, pictures of the spider. And so I'll text her pictures of the spider. And she's always like, yeah, s'more. And, and I'm pretty sure there's many people for whom that would be their worst nightmare is to be getting spider texts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because spiders mm -hmm. enough on their own, like, ah, whatever. But jumping, it's yeah. like, oh, crap. They're going to get revenge yeah. for the cousin Vinny. Yeah. yeah there, and they, they can actually jump a pretty good distance. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so do you think the cats will give it a run for its money and just still destroy it or what? Oh, I'm sure the cats would just eat it within one bite. Just boom, and then would go throw it up on the bedspread. So it would be extra pleasant. Ew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know how my cats work. <laughs> Whenever they eat anything unexpected, then they go and share it in some way. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Because <laughs> it's so darn true. It's like, hey, oh, okay. here's this rodent I killed. It's like, oh, oh, thank yeah. you. Okay. All yeah. right. I, I so didn't need to I see I thought this. you would want this. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> you want to see me kill another? No. no <laughs> we'll keep up the no. good work and keeping them out the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Ah, oh. uh, all righty. So, has your jumping spider given you inspiration for any future novels? Um, not yet, but I'm sure something will pop up at some point because. That's where novels come from. It's from ideas all around me. Ooh. So I'm talking mm -hmm. about indeed. That's right, because that would be a great novel. It's like, oh, shoot, there's a jumping spider. Ah, it's come for revenge. <laughs> it would be, it could be a make a good horror novel, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, indeed. Especially if you get politics involved and piss off both uh -huh. sides too. It's like, all right, oh, yeah. it's a it's where politicians fight a giant jumping spider. <laughs> <laughs> and again, no, that's a probably giant not even jumping a horror spider. novel. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, the spider runs for political office. <laughs> hey, I think there's some real possibilities here now. <laughs> Spider 2024. <laughs> uh, that's right. This will get past. They're going to be put in the web. <laughs> like, we are not filibustering today. You are going inside of a that's web it. until you vote. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be any weirder in current politics, could it? Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, you now know what future novel is going to be. That's right. There we go. <laughs> you heard it here first. That's right. Spider runs for office. The tailor That's gets it. scared every time. That's it. That's it. I just have to think of the right title. Uh, hmm. I said mm -hmm. Spider. 2024 actually has a certain ring to it but that means i'd have to get off my butt and write it very quickly so i don't know actually 2024 is not that close yeah we still got two and a half years so you know yeah but publishing publishing runs slow oh wait i forgot traditional publishing oh yeah that's right well yeah. self-published yeah. it might be quicker yeah i think it might be do better actually self-published it sounds like it would be a good fun self-pub book and i think i think fun books do very well and self-published oh heck yeah it's like hey traditional yeah. publishers don't want this well let's give folks what they really want some good old entertainment yeah. let's give it to them 
Well, I have a friend who does um, just wonderfully uh, does uh, Tasha Black and, and does stories like my big fat alien wedding uh, and, <laughs> and alien bride reality show. And they're, they're hysterical. They're really fun. Really, really fun. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm about to check that one out now. Add that one to the yeah, reading yeah. list. <laughs> <laughs> big fat alien wedding. <laughs> yep oh my goodness yeah. definitely check them out they are fun they really are fun tasha black Ooh, there we go yeah. that's what i'm talking about indeed that's what i'm talking about indeed sweet so i got this fabulous book coming out it's gonna be two days after the big day of birth that's where i celebrate it Celebrating Cat's 26th anniversary of Earth. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes, the 26th birthday. That's it. Exactly. How did you know? Eh, I know things. You know things. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Maybe not a lot, but I stayed up all night to learn <laughs> enough. <laughs> know enough to flatter well <laughs> <laughs> that's right indeed that's it that's it well coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive for round two and this is going to be interesting indeed considering yeah. we got a sci-fi gold medalist here metaphorically speaking that's oh. right indeed that's right indeed so if you were to give a keynote speech 90 minutes it was going to be the last speech of your life and it'll be heard all across the globe all eight million people would tune in to hear the cat rambo message to the freaking earth for 90 minutes they got your whole freaking attention what would the message be and what would the main points of that message entail i think all of it would be about kindness and how kindness is so important not just towards other people but towards oneself, I think being kind to oneself is just absolutely crucial. And I think being kind to the world around us and all of its creatures is just one of the most important things that human beings can do. And that's my TED talk right there. Ha! Uh, forget the teddy bear. This is the going north 90 minute glass keynote <laughs> of your life hour. That's right. We don't believe in red teddy bears. We believe in 90 minute keynotes. That's right. There we go. There we go. Who needs to solve all the Earth's problems in 18 minutes? You get 90. 90. That's it. You can solve a lot of problems in 90 minutes, probably. That's right. Making a jumping spider the prime minister of all the countries, making president. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. We wouldn't understand a word it's saying, but hey, stuff would get done because everybody would probably too stuff scared would... to. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Stuff would get done just immediately. Be like, oh, the spider wants this. I'd be like, oh, shit, yes. <laughs> 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 Whatever the spider wants, the spider gets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the papers would be been black so they could read the white signature from the whip <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can imagine the oval office just filled with webbing a couple of flies stuck to the wall just like the late night snacks yeah i could see it right? there's a lot of possibilities here <laughs> uh, all right sweet well, that's what I'm talking about. So if Cat Rambo <laughs> does this book, you know what happens. <laughs> it was during a podcast interview. That's where I <laughs> solution all of our problems. You put a spider in office. <laughs> a literal jumping spider. <laughs> Who would have known it was so simple? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is anybody going to say anything to him? It's a freaking spider. We are not getting killed by that's that it. thing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Doesn't even understand us. No, but it does. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't understand a word. It's not even sure what it's doing here. But yeah, yeah, Spider President. 
Well, for those who want to snag some copies of the fabulous book, the books to come, especially <laughs> the ultra freaking creative fiction that will put some spider in office. <laughs> What's the best way for folks to do so? <laughs> I think you can find my books on Amazon, and I'm sure that when the Spider book is up, that is one of the first places it will be. Ah, uh, so I'm talking about folks. That's right, check it out. It's all going to be in the show notes, y'all. That's right. That's right, indeed. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for this fabulous book. It's going to be in hardback, paperback, Kindle, and audio, folks. So that's right. You can yeah. take it on the go in more ways than one. You can hear it. <laughs> that's right, folks. You can read this book and be on the lookout. For the sequel, the follow-up, because it's going to be just as fabulous, probably, if not more fabulous, because Kat's having the most fun of her writing career <laughs> now, and that means she's going to have even more fun in the future, which means more great stuff for you to read. So any parting words before we close up shop? Um, I'm going to reiterate my TED Talk and just say be kind to every everybody else. Uh, I think that is about the best thing I can be saying right now, or anybody can be saying right now. Well, not the only thing, but it's a good thing. How's it going, you super special, awesome human? Since you made it to the end of this episode, it looks like you really enjoyed yourself. Since you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with at least three people in your network and tell them what you really liked about this episode. Heck, even shoot myself or the guest an email and let them know what you liked most about this interview so that way they can stay inspired to keep pushing out great work.